hello, hello. including everyone who's doing live stream with us, welcome. So uh, just a little bit of information about the gathering. The gathering is now in its third year. So the gathering is used as an open forum to support black female artists in particular and to acknowledge them in the various ways that they contribute to our field and be advocates for um, better cultural equity in this contemporary dance world, right? So we want to acknowledge all of those things tonight in various ways. So last year, we had 60 attendees. <laughs> and it was comprised of artists, teachers, scholars, administrators, presenters, all of whom contribute to all of what we do, right? So of course, this year, I'm happy to say that we have over 90 people that will be flowing in and out tonight, and so I'm excited about that increase. So, and even more, I'm excited about what we were able to do earlier before the gathering. So we were able to offer two free workshops that were administered by the field. And so they were able to talk to us about how do you sustain a life as an artist, right? Uh, also, looking at the finances, what goes into that? We all, some people struggle with budgeting, you know, trying to really figure that out, both in personal and professional life. So what does that really look like all together? So we had an opportunity to do that. And we also have three partners this year. And so I want to definitely bring all of them up to have different remarks and share with you um, this partnership that we've been able to go with. And I'll start with Mr. Bill T. Jones. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, Tommy Kriegsman, um, Isabella, all of us here at the American Life Arts are very, very proud to share this uh, platform, which is what this place is, with uh, this particular community. Uh, yesterday, I was at the APAC. I don't know if any of you were there. And one of the questions that came up, it is that we are a couple of things, that we are a community. And I'm not quite so sure I buy into that anymore. I think community is a much harder thing to do than my generation <laughs> thought it was. It's not kumbaya. <laughs> um, and I hear you speak about dancers, but I want every dancer here to understand a place like this. You need some things that, in order for this platform to exist, we need a board. Who in this room is going to advocate for the board that's going to put out the dollars so that we can make sure that we have enough to go around for all of these people. We need a more diverse board. Where are the people of color who want to be doing that thing that traditionally associated with the power structure, which is called uh, supporting the arts? So please don't pull off into thinking, I'm a, a press dancer. All the arts organizations are struggling in the same way. This platform is here for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lane. It's a great honor to be uh, included in this. And I'm very, very excited. Um, we were joking. I was joking like this. I have a, I have a coven upstairs. Now, is that a, a is that a, uh, is that objectionable to you to call it a coven? No. You know. Are they witches? Pardon? Are they witches? Yes. Well, what are witches? <laughs> <laughs> what are witches? Witches are powerful women who are speaking a language, uh, a language to and, and for each other. So I use it like tongue in cheek, but I was wondering if maybe you want to, in, there's something magical in it, is what I'm trying to say. And I want this to happen here. Thank you very much on behalf of New York Live Arts, and um, I look forward to seeing all of you at, at our shows as well. Thank you. And now I'd also like to introduce Lane Harrell and Michelle Bayer from Dance NYC, who are also partners for this year's gathering. Thank you, Lane Sierra. Uh, thank you, Bill. Um, I'm Lane Harwell, Executive Director of Dance NYC, and with my colleague Michelle Bayer, we're delighted to join in welcoming you, uh, especially those who are just visiting New York. Welcome 
to New York. Uh, it is our great honor to have Camille A. Brown among the Dance NYC Advisory Board. And to be partnering with her and her team and the Gatherings Advisory Body on this event. We share a commitment to honest dialogue and to addressing inequities, gender inequities and racial inequities that persist in the field. We look forward to continue our learning um, and our work with all of you. And my colleague Michelle will tell you a little bit about what we have in store ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey. Um, as Wayne said, my name is Michelle Bear. I'm the new Equity and Inclusion Coordinator at Dance NYC. So organize our equity and inclusion programming across research, convening, and technology. And one thing that we have coming up, we've been delighted to be working to support Camille in preparing for the gathering. We've also been piloting partnerships with International Association of Blacks in Dance, Women of Color in the Arts. And one, of these, one aspect of these partnerships is offering discounted uh, ticket rates to members of these organizations to our annual symposium, which is our only paid event every year. A uh, full long day of different sessions. We have this year a keynote with uh, Darren Walker from the Ford Foundation, a uh, lunchtime session with Missy Copeland and Virginia Johnson, a conversation on funding racial equity with different funders from CERDNA, Nathan Cummings, uh, Mellon Foundation. So it's a lot of people are convening into this space. I know Adisa Weeks is going to be with us that day and some other people in the room like Maria Bauman. Camille's organizing two sessions later in the day. So it's going to be a really exciting full day and I'm going to pass out some flyers later today with your discount code which is going to be gather so all of you are welcome to join us that day for just a discounted rate of fifty dollars and we hope to see a lot of you there to continue our learning from today yeah thank you all so much and last but not least we have Jennifer Wright Cook who is the executive director at the field um, so we just did a budget workshop downstairs called Budget for Love Story, and to sort of echo Bill, um, the field and, and the work we do in many ways is about building the capacity and some of these infrastructure ways to support work that's being made. So I'm just happy to be involved with the gathering in that way um, and to support that work. Um, and also last year I had the deep pleasure of attending the gathering, um, and I walked in not knowing what was going to happen. I thought it was going to be a panel. I'm not sure why. Um, and I have to say, I got home that night and I, I said to my partner, um, I feel like my blood is just like running throughout my body in the most vibrant way and my heart was just expanded in such ways and I felt so rich and so alive and so I called Camille shortly thereafter and said you know how can we help and I've known Camille for quite a while and we've worked on different projects but I just felt like there's something I wanted to um, be supportive of and in my role as executive director of the field I felt like an opportunity and a responsibility to be helpful as we can. Um, the only other thing I'll say is that we're running a program right now called Field um, Leadership Fund some of you may have applied. Um, one of our fellows is in the house, Sydney. Um, and there are other teachers in the room. Yeah, so it's, a, it's my dream project. And it's a, a paid fellowship program for 12 artists and arts managers, building capacity and under-resourced artists and arts managers to sort of build up the field to be more supportive, um, particularly of artists of color and um, organizations of color. So um, Sydney will tell you, you know, in bits and spurts more about it and how it goes. But we're pilot, piloting it. Um, and it really is my dream project. Um, and so you can follow it on Twitter and blah, blah, blah. And we're going to be doing a public event in May or June, probably an Undoing Racism workshop with Sarita Covington and Nathan Trice and possibly Maria, if I can pull her back um, to New York. So look out for that and um, have a great time. I won't be able to stay, but um, thank you so much for having us as part of your gathering. Before we continue, if everyone can make sure the phone is on vibrate or silent, one of the two will do. I would greatly appreciate that. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce Ms. Camille Abram. This is very, um, very exciting. So I just want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, and I'm so happy this is the third year we are doing it, um, and I plan to continue doing it during this time. Um, as Indira said, it's an open forum, uh, and just for people who don't know, one of the reasons why I started the gathering was because I saw many of my friends in passing, and we would have conversations about what was going on, what we were, what we were frustrated about, and we would give ourselves a powwow session, 
and I wanted to know what would happen if we all came together and talked about these same issues that kept coming up. I wanted to do it during a time that I knew that the dance world was also here too, so they know that we do exist. There are more than five black female choreographers. <laughs> there are many of us out here working and for us to continue to support each other. So that's the reason why I started the gathering. Uh, so thank you for everyone who is here. For the first time, the second time, the third time, thank you. Um, thank you to our partners, Bill T. Jones, Tommy Griezmann, and Nyla, Jennifer Ray Cook, Sean Renee Graham in the field, Lane Harwell, and Michelle Baer of Dance NYC. Uh, I wanna thank my agent. She did a workshop on Friday that spoke about artist and agent relationships. So it's one thing when you ask someone to represent you, it's another thing when you ask them to represent you and do this other thing that I really want you to do as well and get involved. Uh, so she is doing meetings and everything for her own, um, her own artists and roster, but I was just really thankful that she was gener generous enough to carve out some time uh, to speak to people. Um, the Gathering Advisory Board, uh, this is the second year that it's been in existence, and uh, these women have really been instrumental in um, the growth of the gathering. Uh, so I just want to take the time to acknowledge them, Cynthia Oliver, Paloma McGregor, Maria Bauman, Marjani Forte Saunders, Nia Love, Michelle Gibson, Crystal Brown, and Amara Tabor-Smith. Um, I thank them for their support. Um, I thank them for challenging me. Um, and helping me to develop this. So I just want to take the time to, to acknowledge them. Uh, Vijay Matthew and How Round TV live stream. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Jacoby Adam, a photographer. Uh, Ashini and Fuko, a social media manager. Uh, gathering volunteers, Clarice Young, Kimberly Moon, Taraji Omar, Rachel Watson, and Amara Tabor Smith. Uh, I want to thank my mom, Lorraine Brown, who. Uh, <laughs> This is her third year doing hospitality. Uh, so, <laughs> so I just want to give a shout out to her. Uh, and Indira Goodwine, again, this is someone who um, is my company. She is my company manager for Camille Brown and Dancers, but again, it's one thing to <laughs> have someone uh, work for you in the company setting, but it's also another thing when she takes on this project and my other initiative and my other uh, independent projects. So I just want to thank her. Uh, in the summertime, she is transitioning from company manager to managing director. So I just want to thank her. <laughs> and she's the manager of the gathering. So, uh, and I just want to give a shout out to our past facilitators, Baraka Sele and Onye Ozuzu. Uh, they were just fantastic, uh, so different, um, but so needed for all of us. Um, and now, I want to introduce our facilitators this year. Um, I am so honored. Uh, the word that I use when I'm really, really excited is hype. Yes. <laughs> um, and I am excited because I know th how I have felt to be in your presence. I know how much um, I feel a sisterhood and I feel the impact. And I am tremendously honored that you uh, have taken the time uh, to help us come together to lead us. Um, Paloma McGregor, who is the founder of Dancing While Black. Shani Jamila, Managing Director of Urban Justin Center. I am just so honored to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, hey everybody. Hey. Hey. Hello, family. Um, yeah, I'm Paloma. And I'm Shani, and we um, are longtime friends and collaborators, and really excited to be here with you all today. Um, the purpose of today um, is to create a container, which we're already doing with this circle. And I would ask those of you who are not actually in the level of this circle down here to come and join us in some space. There's space for you. So um, 
rear of all the keepers of this container today. So for the next couple hours when we're together, um, Shani and I will be helping to push some things forward, but we're all assisting one another in keeping the container. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, today we're gonna be leading you through a series of facilitated um, structures that uh, aim to help us to get to know one another a little bit better. Um, I've been at both gatherings and have found them to be um, rejuvenating and um, the energy that bubbles up in the room is so exciting, exciting and I'm excited about deepening our connections a bit. So we're gonna be moving around the room with our bodies in and out of different structures that allow us to have small conversations with one another. Small, I mean time-wise, maybe they'll be small, and hopefully you'll be able to jump into them again and again over the course of the year that we don't have a gathering, but that we might continue to gather ourselves in our own facilitated ways um, to continue the conversations that start here. So for me, this is like the beginning of something together, and hopefully we'll surface some things that each of us can leave here with a next step for our work that we wish to. Yeah. Well said. I won't spend a lot of time adding to that because I want us to have the majority of the time that we're sharing together um, actually in activity with each other. But what I do want to say first is, although I am new to the gathering, I'm so excited about being part of this here today and Camille, um, such a fantastic introduction. Thank you for having us here. Um, I'm really thrilled to see so many faces, though, that feel like home to me you know, that I've known from so many different places over the years and so many different interactions. And from the spirit that I already felt in the room when you all were just walking in, you know, so much joy, so much love, so much reconnection. And what we hope to do over the course of the next few hours is really begin to deepen those and think more about how we can move forward as a collective and as a community. And so, of course, some of the things that I'll be drawing from and will be drawing from over this time have to do with experiences that I may have had you know, my decade with urban bush women um, in many capacities. Um, some learning that I did with Liz Lerman and Cassie Metter from Dance Exchange in DC or Tacoma Park. Um, some study with Cornerstone Theater Company out of uh, Los Angeles. And I bring these up because I'm not making this shit up. Like, I'm, it's not like, oh, Paloma is so, she made up all this stuff. You know, there are places that I've studied and people who have passed on information to me that maybe I've adapted in my own way. Um, and so I'd like to put that out there and specifically the story circle model that we'll be using. We'll be talking more about where that comes from. Um, and I know that we each bring in our own range of histories and expertise. Um, and we also bring into the room the legacies of people who have come before us. Um, so I think to help seal this container initially, um, I'd like us all to just stand for a moment. And think about uh, someone who's maybe not on this side of the veil with us anymore, um, but who comes into the room with us to help us to stand in our power here together with one another. And so we'll, I think we should this space will begin to open up for all of us to step into, and I think before we do that, we should place the names of those who we need to be in the room with us to help keep this container strong. So it doesn't have to be one at a time, I think just let's build this container between us. Catherine Dunham. Blondell. Mm. Jordan. Jordan. Octavia, Octavia Butler, Lola Wiley. A train on strong. Grandmother, Edison Fujita. 
Give me a right. And so we know that more will probably continue to reveal themselves as our time together goes on. So as, you know, if there are times where you think of another person, just you can continue to bring them into the room with us. We need them to move forward. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about the kind of space that we're going to collectively create. We have these post-its over here, but they are actually hidden from some of us in the room. So I'm going to move them. This might be a better space. Maybe put that one a little lower. So I can that's going to stay, but we're going to make it work. We have tape. <laughs> we have tape. We have tape. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so the exercise, as you can see from our title at the top, hello, welcome, uh, at the top of the paper here is how we do. Uh, and Paloma and I were talking about it in advance of this, and we were like, you know how we do. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is, right? So it's an opportunity for us to talk about what are going to be our collective rules of engagement over the course of the next few hours. What is it that we will all agree to? What kind of space are we working to create? So I'm going to ask you basically just to popcorn anything that you'd like for me to add to this. I'll start by saying one mic, right? So when we're having collective time to talk in a space like this, and there'll be lots of time that we're talking all together. But when there's a point where we just need one voice to be heard, let's respect each other enough to create the space to hear that. Can we agree to that? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. OK, so I'll put one mic. Can anyone point to a chair near them that might be free? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. As people enter the room, if we can do that, that would be great. Thank you. What other things might we want to put under our banner of how we do? Sharing the space. You said it well. And what I'll put is just sharing the space, and we all know what she means by that, right? Mm -hmm. we good? Okay, thank you. What else? Respecting uh, different points of view. Say that louder. Judgment-free zone. Judgment-free word. <laughs> Safe space, but not comfortable space. <laughs> Talk about that some more. Um, so in alignment with the idea of a judgment-free zone, this is a space that we are all welcome in and respected in, but that doesn't mean we're always going to be comfortable. Um, we are inviting ourselves to be challenged and, and pushed in whatever ways the space brings but we all know that we are held by each other in the space. Okay, okay anything else? That? Sure. So I think also along those lines, then this idea, I know that people are in and out, um, and I, I respect that people have a variety of things that they have to do today. I would say don't use your discomfort as a reason to be like, oh, I have to go now. <laughs> because we're intending to facilitate you through a stages of a journey. So if there's a moment where the conversation gets uncomfortable, that's actually the moment where transformation, where learning, where growth, where aha can happen. Um, and so, I mean, I know how that is, where it's like, you know what, I'm feeling kind of uh, some kind of way now. I might need to go to the bathroom with my all of my stuff. <laughs> just you know, because you know, yeah. So just I mean, be tracking yourself too in terms of that. You know, we're not intending for people to feel some kind of way, but you know, there's a, people are going to be bringing up different viewpoints. We're going to be respecting that people are coming from different places, conceivably, and just understanding that um, that we want to like work through those spaces together and ask questions for understanding about. Know, how to move to the next phase. So can I sum that up as stay present? Stay present. 
question. It's a practical one about breaks and going to the bathroom and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No breaks. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe that was coming. No, no, no. It's a good question. I think anybody who has to go to the bathroom should go to the bathroom. They <laughs> <laughs> need to go to the bathroom. Um, and uh, we built in, there's some space in here, but we packed it. So like we want to make the most use of this time. So I also feel like, you know, we're going to be moving out of different ways of working. So it won't feel like, oh, we're in one trajectory. Like it's not like a three hour jam class. Um, so I think, and I think if there's really coming a time where the group is feeling something, the reason we're co-facilitating is because when one's facilitating, the other can be kind of paying attention to what's happening in the room. So, but we might not know this, but I feel free to come. You know, it's feeling kind of, oh, can we, you know, yeah, and we'll see what we can do. We definitely want to be responsive in that way. Thank you. Yep. How we do, sorry. Um, Maria and Lee. Uh, I was just going to say, maybe to add, given our topic, that we see context and system in our consciousness and in the room. Because I, because it's so easy to fall into blaming ourselves and each other for some of the painful truths that we uncover about our status in this field. So I would just ask that given the topic, something I'd like to add is that I and others hold a sense of context okay. and history and systems while we have this conversation. Well put. Remember context. we do. I wanted to go back to one because we talked about the word safe space came up and I feel like that theme is so broad of what that means and I don't know that we can collectively make a definition but I feel like the specificity around that is a little bit important. I don't know what to say more but <laughs> I'm saying that we're yeah. just listening to the safe space where people consciously listen and don't just think about what you're about to say but In no particular order, y'all self-regulate. You've had your yeah, they've had your um, making no assumptions. Mm -hmm. That may be in alignment with um, judgment. Mm -hmm. So if there's an uncomfortable moment and you see me walk out, please know that I'm not leaving because I'm uncomfortable. I have to go. But then that also has to do with the broader covering of let's make no assumptions about mm -hmm. anything. And I guess that might also be being open. Mm -hmm. Yep. No assumptions. I always remember that from childhood. <laughs> Makes an ass out of you and me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Some people haven't heard that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I heard that on Marty Miller. That dates me. Really? But I don't remember where I got it from. I just remember from childhood. You assume yeah. you make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> Wisdom from the ages. Yes. I wanted to um, add to what Mariah was saying around space, uh, safe space, um, acknowledging that everyone's emotional responses to maybe things that are being said are okay. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily have to be responsible or accountable to everyone's emotions, but um, just to respect what the responses are. Mm -hmm. Respect what the responses are. So I'll do respect point of views and mm -hmm. responses. Excellent, thank you. I was going to say ask and own. Um, ask whether there's information that you don't understand or don't know, and then own what it is that you're offering. All right, I like that. Instead of um, me trying to listen on the different points, and I'm going to go back to 
I'm trying so hard not to sing Beyonce right now that listens. Is that Beyonce or Jennifer Hudson? That listens no, song? Beyonce. I'd ruin the whole space if I opened my mouth and started singing that song. I just wonder if there was a way or something said that people don't, a person doesn't understand, if there's a way of sort of asking a question about that or if there's some sort of way of like clarification. Yeah, I think ask for clarification. I think this idea of, of that this is a space where if anything is said that, you know, I've heard it called like a literacy moment or, you know, like I don't know what you're talking about right now. You're talking sort of through something and I actually am lost on the first thing that you talked about. So, I mean, I think asking for clarification, I don't know if that, yep. what's that? A literacy moment? Yeah, okay. The other thing is it'll vary from space to space because we have you in so many different configurations over the course of our time. So at one point it might be you and your partner directly and you can ask that person directly or at another point it can be like you just did with this entire group. You know, however it feels right. Releasing the necessity to know and understand. You know, mm -hmm. like it's okay if I don't understand. It's okay if I don't know in this present moment. Mm -hmm. But that's okay too. That's all good. You know, not knowing is all good too. It's okay not to know. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, being honest and reflective, um, taking a moment to, you know, um, step back and say, where am I in this conversation, or how am I, um, and also being honest about it. So, um, I guess uh, along saying, um, like, I, I don't know, but just being honest about it, and honest, like, we all are individuals that make up the community in this space right now, and um, we can always fall back on the community that we're building. Mm -hmm. So, being honest and reflective. Honest and reflective. And the other thing I want to pull out from what you just said is um, be willing to step back, know when to step back and know when to step up, you know, but make sure that we have enough space for all of our voices together. So I'll write that on here too, if I may. Let's get maybe three more if there are more to say, more, three more to say, and if not, we'll move on to the next thing. I'm trying to remember this or Maria, people who facilitate is something like ouch and oops. That if somebody <laughs> says something that like, you know, pricks or you can say ouch out loud just to acknowledge that and then there's a moment to come back later to kind of unpack what happened. Mm -hmm. um, so just to offer that. I forget what it's called. It's something like that. Like ouch and then I don't remember what oops was, but mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, I think we should, I mean, should I think that that's, yeah. We'll be working a lot in small groups and do it like this. We won't be coming back to this big group a lot because we want for people to get a chance to talk. And when you stay in the big group for a long time, fewer voices get to rise to the surface. So um, yeah, so I think there'll also be an intimate ways in which to voice that that might be formal or might not be as formal, but yeah. Um, speaking from personal experience, the I versus we, speci especially since it can happen that we can be uh, <laughs> put into one big lump. Um, so finding that personal and individual experience and voice. Speak from personal experience. And lastly, mm -hmm. Okay. Lastly, do we collectively agree to everything that we've got on these two sheets? Yes. yes. If you agree, can you like place your hands forward into the circle? Like I offer this, I offer this. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Re 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 let's re recap. Okay. Let's recap. <laughs> okay. Let me know what I'm doing. Paloma, you want me to read this one? You read that I'll one. Re yes, that's fine. <laughs> How we do. One like, sharing space, ask and own, respect points of view, different points of view, and the responses that they engender. This is a judgment-free zone. It is a safe, although not necessarily comfortable space. Stay present, remember our context, conscious listening, no assumptions, because assuming makes an ass out of you and me. Boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
That's how you win a spelling bee. <laughs> Listen again, because it bears repeating. Uh, it's okay not to know. And I think before that came a uh, literacy moment, like ask for that if you need it. Honest, be honest and reflective. Step back and step up. Ouch or oops, so acknowledging when something has stepped over a certain boundary for you, um, while also recognizing safe but not comfortable. <laughs> um, speak from personal experience, the I and not the we. Okay, so now can we put our body in it a little bit? Like something like, you know, some part of you, like place some part of you that's important. So, and then take one of those hands and place one of those hands some part, on some part of you that feels like it's significant to, to agree to this. And if it's your gut bone or your heart or, you know, some other place that feels important to do it, you know, that you're really like, you're offering that forward from this place in you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. It's still you. I know. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, all right. So the next step is to find somebody in the room that you do not know, cross over and make their acquaintance. And as soon as you find that person, we are going to give you sort of collective instructions on what we're going to do next. So don't find them and start chatting because then you're not going to be able to hear what comes next. But you know, real G's move in silence like lasagna. You. <laughs> so we got space now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that you are going to ask and answer for each other is what brought you here? What brought you here? It can be a hope, it can be an experience, it can be an idea, it can be whatever it is for you. But please ask and answer for each other, what brought you here? I'm Rashawn. I'm like, let me just know your name. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Where are you from? Chicago. So am I. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's really rare. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. I went to Prince Town. I grew up in the South But I live in my heart. I live on 54th and Jersey. And my people like to surprise myself. Yeah, and we were very
Ago Ame since they're listening for you. Ago Ame. Ago Ame. I love this one. Y'all know so. Yes. <laughs> you know how they do. Right. Yeah. That's what we're saying. Let's do how we do. So also, we're here, and this is a gathering of, I, maybe doesn't, everybody in the room does not identify themselves as a dancer, uh, mm -hmm. even though I always like to argue around that. <laughs> body. But, um, but you know we can't get out of here without doing some movement. So we're going to be doing a little bit of movement all the way through this. And this first time you're doing movement, it's just a movement, a gesture, something quick to reflect back your listening to your partner. So what you heard, but um, interpreted through, synthesized through your body. So it's just a, a quicker, like this will be a more short conversation, but one at a time, just reflecting back, or both together, like however you, I don't know how y'all did your conversation, so you should do your dance how you did your conversation. <laughs> While you're still in silence, find somebody else in the room that you do not know and move towards that person. you here and I don't necessarily mean the Uber driver or the train <laughs> although if that's part of your story then that's part of your story but I'm talking about somebody who's been formative in your development as a dancer as a choreographer as a scholar as a performer in whatever capacity that you're here as who brought you here I'm not really breaking. 
multiple ways of knowing, sensing, trusting even on the face of you know, our culture, which says no, there's one way to know something. And I think a lot of our I mean, you may have talked about more than two people, so it might be multiple embodyings, but quick embodyings for the other half of the room so that they get a sense of what, who this half of the room has, is bringing with you, like what the power 
of the folks you're bringing with you into the room who helped bring you here is, and then the, this other side will share with this side. So it's just about, it's not a performance, it's a sharing of that energy. Yes. And yes. Asking for clarification. Yes. <laughs> of course. Okay. Well, I'm not quite sure. So we all, just a moment ago, we all sort of danced our listening, or we embodied our listening to the stories. Now we're embodying the energy of both the person that we talked about that we brought into the room, but I, we can't help but be influenced by the story that we just heard, too. So you're, and it could be a, I mean, we're not talking, I'll cut you off if it goes very, 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 very long, <laughs> even though I'm sure that your person deserves a full <laughs> length, you know what I mean, for the purposes of time, but something that feels like the essence. So we're looking for the essence of the, in movement, in your body, the essence of the person you brought into the room, but also will be influenced by what you heard about the person that you, the people you shared with, if there were a trio, brought into the room too. So it's, a, it's another kind of distilling of your listening and the story you just told. Now we were doing the what got you here. So are we embodying what got you here a with the first question? Oh, okay. For, for but me. embody what got you here, if that's what you talked about. Okay. Yeah, because so we were also talking about who yeah. brought us here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is about the who if you have that. Yeah. Okay. So in any case, as a large group, you're gonna share that energy through movement with the other side of the room. And then when you're finished, this other group will share their energy. <laughs> 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 You're all going together. You're all creating a collective energy that is that is at once your own body in the space. Yeah, I know it's kind of esoteric, but it's kind of not. It's kind of how we do too. Um, that you're embodying both who you are in the space, your body in the space, but also you just talked about who who brought you here. So you're also bringing them into the space. We spoke names of people earlier. Now you're moving those people into the space, that energy into the space. We're just kind of trying to pepper, season the container that we're in with all of what we bring to it. So let's, well, I don't know what seasoning you brought, but it's your turn to throw it in the pot. So this group is witnessing now, which is also how we do. Yeah, okay. Great, good group listening. Good group listening, great, yes, thank you.
do more group work, but let's open up a little bit back into the circle um, and be ready to move back up. But as you're moving back to the circle, I just want you to be thinking about processing what you just witnessed and what you just experienced through the telling, because we're going to collect, we're going to harvest a little bit of that information. So we hope to continue to build on all of those kinds of experiences. And part of the reason I'm asking you to reflect on them is you're, um, you're going to be synthesizing what you take from this. So you know, there's containers being created for certain, um, with certain tasks attached to them. But I can't, you know, I'm not creating your experience. So I think you making meaning of your experience as we move through is a critical part of how we move through the world. And so I just encourage you to continue to be processing through how you are making meaning individually, not necessarily how I'm not going to prompt you to have a certain meaning attached to any of this. Um, I do know that we've all come here for different reasons. I mean, I could hear some of, you know, there's a wide range. There are many different reasons to come here as there are people in the room. Um, that we come from different places, that we have a variety of experiences. And although we do share some things that bring us to this uh, room together, um, there are ways in which our multiple identities um, might intersect, might be in tension, um, might be coincidence, or might be deliberate. Um, there are, uh, so we're going to tease out some more of these identifiers and have some more conversations specific to dance. Um, and I invite you to make some choices among those in the way that we know as we navigate landscape. You know, I may do multiple things within this moment. I'm going to choose like, OK, this is the group that I'm going to be a part of in order to move a conversation forward. Because I know that as I'm asking you to select any one of these groups, I'm also telling you that you can't be in the group that's next to you uh, in the room, even though that might also be your group. For the purposes of, I mean, I'm Gemini, so I might be able to do that. Um, but I haven't mastered that superpower yet. So, um, you know, so I recognize at the outset, just in all transparency, that any number of us in the room might belong to all of the groups that are being presented, and I'm asking you to choose. Um, for the purposes of group learning and for your purposes of your own teasing out information and getting to know one another better. So we're going to start, um, so we're going to move around in the room again. Uh, we're going to start with uh, something related to our, I'll say early dance experience, but if you find that something else feels more present for you, like, no, actually I'd like to identify the thing that I'm really in right now, that's fine. Like, this is, this is a prompt. Um, but not a rule. No one's going to go around and check your ID on this. Um, so I want to ask you to uh, put yourself into groupings, and then you'll get the next prompt once you get there. Um, according to significant, and I'm saying early experience of dance form, so significant, something that sh helped to shape where you are, something that feels palpable to you, present to you right now. Um, a significant early dance form, and I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to 
proposed three categories, <laughs> um, which are not exhaustive categories that probably encompass everything that everyone in the room experiences. And if these, if you find that you do not, you cannot select any of these categories, then we need to make a new one. Okay, so I'm also open to shift. Um, so if you feel like for you present right now, one of the most significant sort of early experiences of a dance form is an African diaspora form or a non-Western dance technique, if that feels significant to you, don't move yet because I'll read all three just so you can be sure. If that feels significant to you, then you'll meet over in this space. Um, if a modern slash ballet technique, Western form feels like, oh, that was really a significant um, uh, early ex dance experience for me, um, then you'll be on this side of the room. And if a social dance form, including clubs or family gatherings or like living room or something feels significant for you in this moment, <laughs> then this will be the space that you would gather in. In those three categories, is there anyone sort of left without a place to go? I'm going to go to all of them. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> just a clarification. Yes. Just which one you resonate the most with? Yeah, at this, yeah, at this point. And it could be, you know, it could be that it w was an early formative thing, or it could be just like, no, that's the one I feel like when you brought it up, I felt like, oh, that's the group I need to go to. Yeah. I know, Dr. BGG. <laughs> I, I laid all that out for you. Yes. Um, does everybody feel like they have some place to go? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So you're going to, I'll actually lay it out for you right now. You're going to go to this space and find, put yourself in groupings of three, and then you'll look back at me. So you'll go to the space, <laughs> African diaspora or non-Western form, uh, ballet or modern, social dance club, etc. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. <laughs>
I go. I go. I 
go. I go. We're not finished. Yeah, I'm checking in with you. Yeah, I'm checking in with you. So um, I'm going to give you uh, a little more time, but I'd also like to layer into that time. If you all can be thinking a little bit about how what you've said so far and maybe what you're going to continue to say, um, and a little more time, like <laughs> two minutes, um, uh, may fr be framed in terms of uh, values and assets mm -hmm. that you bring into the room. So how these conversations you're having, how are values and assets a part of what you've already been talking about? Yeah. Great. <laughs>
<laughs> just so you have a durational sense. So the next time I say two minutes and I hold you to it, you're like, well, that did not feel like the last two minutes because it wasn't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we want you to, um, you'll largely stay within, yes, I understand. That's my timer. Um, we'll largely, uh, you'll largely probably get to stay within your form that you just talked about. We're going to start to combine groups so that you move, like moving with your group to form a group of six or seven. So some of you have four, so you might be looking for a group of three to join us. Some of you are in groups of three, so you might be looking for another group of three to join us with or whatever. So you're basically, two groups are going to combine now, two of your small groups are going to combine to form a group of six or a group of seven. Let me know if you end up having issues with that, but I think the diaspora group, yeah, might have to migrate to other forms. <laughs> okay, you guys are right there. <laughs> you got go. Thank you. Actually, we need to all say our names first, and that's it. So don't feel any kind of way. You're going to have time in this group now. Um, so before we uh, move forward with where we're going next with this group, which I think will continue to surface assets, values, the stories of each person within this group, maybe the ways in which you have connectivity, maybe the ways in which you ha have difference, um, 
and how each of you are individuals and part of this whole. So I invite you to find, as many of you have, a place where you could comfortably spell, spend some time with one another. Um, that might be pulling up chairs, that, you know, so, because you're gonna spend some time in these groups. <laughs> yeah. um, and is this what we're gonna, what you just said? Or just no, so now, now there's gonna be more instructions, but right now you're just gonna be in, your one instruction is to get comfortable. <laughs> I'm noticing already, so Shani's gonna give some instructions in Story Circle in a moment, but if you need to go to the bathroom, you some people have gone right now. So this is this is kind of where you can go. It's not really a bright it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, Yeah. There's two, there's on this side and on this side. Oh, I didn't shift to a new Okay, now what was it that you were gonna say? No, I think you should that right there. Because we're gonna move on to a new thing, so yeah. Now, Angie, what was it that you wanted Introduce to yourself. Yeah, Thank you all for absorbing a new person into your group. Welcome, I think. Yeah, how are you? Good. Why do you think this is one? 
I got down here around 12. Hey! How are you? I didn't even see you over there. I, I just oh. Are you here with us through the end? Yes. Until 7? Yes. Okay. Where should I go? Uh, join this group right here with me because they only had five. <laughs> transition us into the next um, step of our process together. And so what we're going to do now is something called story circles. Many of you may have already participated in them. In fact, by show of hands, if you've ever participated in the story circle, please. Excellent. Great. Um, so Paloma spoke a little bit at the beginning about some of her influences that have um, shaped some of the exercises that we're doing. One of the biggest influences in my life um, that shapes the work that I do uh, is my family and my history. I come from a family full of uh, change makers and educators and artists and people who are committed to us. Um, and one of those people that I'm going to call his name right now in this space is my uncle John O'Neill, who was a co-founder of Free Southern Theater, mm -hmm. which is a cultural arm of SNCC. Uh, and also Junebug Productions, which FST morphed into in 1980 in New Orleans. Uh, and Junebug is still in operation today. Many of y'all know Steph, uh, Stephanie McKee, who um, is currently running Junebug. 
Um, one of the tools that Uncle John put together that uh, I find extremely useful and I've used in a number of different spaces has been the story circle process. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to lay out some of the, the rules of how this process works. Um, and if I miss anything, those of you who participated in them before, please feel free to jump in and share that with the group. Uh, one of the most important parts of this is that this is a radically democratic process. Each person is going to have the same amount of time um, to give their story. For the purposes of this exercise, we're going to ask everybody to stay at three minutes or less. Three minutes or less. It sounds like a little time, it's a lot. Each <laughs> person or the group? Sorry? Each person. Each person or the group? Per person. Oh. Per person. So we're going to go around in the circle in the groups that you're currently in with each person having three minutes or less. Um, and as part of that, I need to know that there's a time piece in every group. If you have a watch or a cell phone or something that can keep time, can you please raise your hand? I want to make sure every group has it or grabs it. <laughs> Is there any group now that does not have a timepiece in your group? Okay, so what we're going to ask you all to do, rather than have one person who's tasked with keeping the time and then can't be fully engaged with every story as it happens, is that you pass that timepiece around mm -hmm. so that the person next to you, when you're coming to say two minutes and 30 seconds, just lets you know. And then pass that around. Is that clear? <laughs> okay, great. Um, so we're going to go in order. Whoever wants to start, then you'll go around in order. If you're not ready to speak, it's okay to say pass. And then the group can come back to you uh, after everybody else has finished telling their stories. Listening, conscious listening, again, listening <laughs> is a really important part of this process, more than talking. So you don't want to come to it with, this is the story I'm going to tell. Trust the, so trust the circle and trust the stories that are shared to perhaps catalyze or spark whatever may come to mind for you in your deepest, truest place when it's your turn. Uh, and allow that to be what you share. Clarification, so yes. no, don't cross talk. Like no the person cross -talk. with the floor. Okay. That's an sure. important rule actually, thank you for saying that. So when you're going around and you're three minutes each, everybody has their three minutes, no questions, no cross talk, no anything except giving respect and honor to that person to tell their story. And if there's time at the end after everybody has gone, then there's room for internal discussion and crosstalk. Okay. Um, you want to choose one story. One story. And if there are several that emerge for you, again, trust the circle to feel which one you want to contribute to your space. You don't have to take all three minutes, too. Right? So if your story concludes after one, okay. You know. Uh, let's see. Silence is okay. Don't feel when it's your turn that, oh my God, I'm up. <laughs> you know, if you need to take a moment and sit with yourself before you share, that's okay. And we ask everybody else in your circle just to respect that. Uh, I think that's it. Have I missed anything, community? Is there a story prompt or? Yeah. I'm going to give oh, you the prompt. Ask. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? from those of y'all who participated in Story Circle before. Is everything clear about how it goes down? Okay, great. So the prompt <coughs> is intentionally broad. Share a pivotal moment in your journey. <laughs> Share a pivotal moment. One pivotal moment in your journey. And perhaps how you navigated it, who was there, the when, the how. You know, when you Say think about telling letter. a story, like perhaps how you navigate it, you know, just so you, okay, tell a pivotal moment in my journey. You know, when was it? Where did it happen? Who was there? Um, how were you navigating? How did you feel? 
How do you feel about it now? It could be something from yesterday. It could be something from last year. It could be something from 20 years ago. It could be resolved. It could be open. No story is too small, so don't feel like, oh, somebody told this story about the moment they decided to form the, you know, I don't know if my, you know, that there's room in here. At, you all have already been experiencing the spectrum of who you all are, so honor that in these circles. And if you mean to say moment, you mean in the broadest sense, I'm assuming. Absolutely. Okay. Right. It's not a 503 on January 17th, right. <laughs> unless that's your story. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. All right. So we are going to start our collective talk and have at it, y'all. Oh, one thing I would say, sorry to interject this, because I see you all are kind of looking at, oh, who's going to time and who's going to give the person who's speaking, you know, maybe you, maybe you pass it along and the person next to them time. Oh, you did. And that to just yep. give them a warning. Great. I did. <laughs> Sorry. Just to get, make sure you're really giving people a warning before their time is up. Just to, mm -hmm. yeah. Whoever the person is. Yeah, but 
Yeah. Just a lot of For clarification, what just happened was that because she, had, she, she said she was done. That was, yeah, she had, she had that was the only reason I said yeah, yeah, no, I'm just asking for clarification. Yeah. I'm not talking about if, if she hadn't been done, that would have been cost her. Okay. Uh, are we doing what you just did right now after everyone's I think you I think it's a mistake that we're doing what we do. Can we just let the person decide if it's okay? Can yes, that, that's a, yeah. can, can we just let each person decide if they want to talk? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I don't think we should do not pass the three minutes. I would suggest that we wait until everybody's done with their three minutes. So we probably or, or, should or if a person doesn't choose to use three minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I'm just saying. And you don't have to use that to interrogate you. Not yeah. that that's what you do. I'm just. No, I know I do. Not. <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's just, it's good tricks. I don't want you to think that's what I'm saying. No, we want to do that as a practice. Yeah, I think we shouldn't have this conversation. Not after three minutes. After when the three minutes hit, we should just. So, a um, good number of years ago, um, at Duke University American Dance Festival, I was attending as an assistant to Deborah Jowett. And, uh, you know, she was teaching dance writing, um, dance criticism specifically. Uh, and so I was taking the courses, the class with her, and I had a, a buddy, um, another writer and I, um, who read some of my work and said, you know, you're working entirely too hard. And, you know, this was very, very early on for me, so I had like no conception of what was necessary to put into a piece and what was not. I just wanted to, to be you know, conscientious and to do, you know, to just to be perfect and, uh, in, in whatever, whatever that meant to me at the, at the moment. And so I didn't know that I could kind of relax around it and, um, you know, absorb what was, what was meaningful to me and give that back to people who would read what I had done. And, I, and I, it's funny because I don't really think about that moment a lot, and he said that to me, but when she gave that prompt, that's what came up. It was just a sense of, you know the freedom that you have now, even when you sit down at that computer and have so much fun, you know, letting this stuff come through you, it's about you having learned that lesson over those many years of just letting it go. Just be with this this work that you're seeing. Be with your readers. Be with your own sensibility and enjoy it. You know, it's a puzzle. It's, you know, it's a difficult puzzle as you're trying to make it all known. You know, but just let it be. Don't you know? Don't try to throttle it. Don't try to throttle it. You know.
She just constantly cared about the other person. Um, so that moment in third grade I changed the course of my life. I'm doing everything I do today because someone just said, I see something in you and I'm going to go with you. to value um, those connections as opposed to um, something specific to the situation like so I guess the story is just about processing that and I am kind of a nomadic person and like accepting that for myself and not allow anybody to make I don't know create a situation where that's not about me. And I'm speaking about particularly uh, the value of traditions. Sometimes over innovative thoughts. 
Whereas I think they maybe should be kind of circling in the same space. Or at least that's the best way that it works for me. So, 14 years ago, I have a camera singing up to two dollars. And I feel like everything that I've done in my career means my heart from that point becoming a single mother has been about proving myself to be a success, proving myself to be more than resilient. And I came to New York probably about four years, I think, after I became a single mother. It reminded me a lot of things. I went to Brazil, I never forgot to breathe. Did all kinds of things that got initiated in college. My whole life shifted, but I was also always very broke. <laughs> so I was very broke. And um, three years ago, no, last year, around this time, I found myself in this precarious situation where I had been teaching um, at a college here in New York for seven years. I finally reached a point where I was almost going to be considered a tenure track, and I had a play that was going up for a world premiere in DC, and I had a relationship with somebody who had been together with for 13 years, and everything needed to end. None of those things were sustainable. Things that I thought meant my success, and I had to walk away from the job due to gender discrimination in the workplace and many other barriers, and I had to pull my play from the middle of the because the producer was dishonest and didn't raise the money that needed to be raised in order to issue real contracts to people, and I had to break up with the person I had been with for 13 years because the relationship was toxic. And at that point, three years ago, I mean, it was not three years ago, at that, it feels like three years ago, at that point, one year ago, I thought that everything I had been working toward that felt so close was just completely wasted and that I would not be the success that I needed to be for my daughters and for myself. But it was really just a blip in the largest scheme of life and a continuum. It wasn't the end of anything, it was just the beginning. And thank you for that pivot, for the strength to be able to leave all of those things I thought I'd be working to
sharing your stories like it was palpable from the outside just the way it was such I don't know there was just such an attentive listening in the room um, so yeah thank you for that um, I want to take a moment before we're going to do some very quick modes of synthesis um, and we know we're sort of running down to our time and there's some stuff that logistically has to happen for this larger gathering as part of this last bit of time we have. So we also want to respect the time that Camille and Indira have carved out for that and not run over into it and then have them sort of feeling stressed to get out of the space. Um, so let's uh, come to a comfortable place where you can move and that could be standing or it could be, I think you all make a choice. I feel like there should be a choice in this, at this you know, yeah. <laughs> So quickly and quietly come to, in your circle still, you're still in your circle, just come to a comfortable place where you might move your body in your circle. You can put your stuff to the side for now because you're going to be processing some more in different ways. Great. So reforming your circle, if your circle has dissipated, Reforming it quickly. <laughs> so you're gonna do some so you're gonna do some moving synthesis. So you're going to through your own body synthesize the ideas that have come through, but we're gonna do it like in a wave, you know, kinda like you know, that, except not, you don't have to do that. No. And if you did do that, I hope you do it much better than I just did it. Um, but you're, each person is going to, just like you pass the story through, now you're going to pass the energy of the stories through the circle. But now your body is in, the, all of the stories are inhabiting the body. So it's just where you are now in your body, now that these stories have been put into the pot and are part of your experience. So it's quick, it's not for any one person. In the same way we talked about equity of time in the story circle, each person had three minutes. These are quick synthesis. I'm, I'm doing it, I'm synthesizing it, I'm letting it bubble up and then I'm passing it to the next person. Whoever decides to go first gets to choose what direction it goes in and then the energy just flows until it comes back to the original person. Does that make sense? So it probably shouldn't take more than like a minute at the tops. Okay? So for the whole thing to happen. It's just once around. But it, I mean, if the time is still going, other people still going, I mean, I could see some group being like, well, they're still going, so I have another thing. <laughs> you know? So yes, it's just once around, but yeah. So allow the movement, the energy of the stories to move through your bodies and through your collective body of your circle. One person picks to go and then pick which direction you're going in. Thank <laughs> you. 
that I felt so related with each one of them. <clears throat> and I felt very connected with each one of them. And I felt like I knew them for so long and in a different place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say it felt so real to be in a room full of people, but only really seeing the people right in front of me. <laughs> and so everyone else came, it became like a landscape or background, and mm -hmm. I really saw these people, and it felt like a little intimate bubble. Were there any commonalities that you noticed that arose between the stories? And you don't necessarily need to say what the stories were, but what what did you notice? Commonalities or differences that emerged within your groups? Owning power in a way that says I can take a risk um, and maintaining composure in the face of <laughs> risk. I think there's a lot of gratitude that I sense too. It's like when memories come up, it helps me to say, oh yeah, that person was important. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was, that was a pivotal person. So I heard that. I also heard a lot about joy. Mm -hmm. And the two things I think are very connected. Mm -hmm. Yes, gratitude and joy. I heard deadlines or something running out of time or setting a timeline, a deadline for yourself or saying my time in this space is done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The presence of family, <laughs> whether it had, the story was about, you say that louder, the presence of family, whether the story had specifically to do with a family member or just the family was a part of the, the a part of the landscape, a part of the, the context and history of the story. Self-reflection. And um, personal evaluation. Uh, so I heard a lot of that. Did somebody say power? No. Did they say power? <laughs> Empowerment, self reflection, family. 
a recognition of change and transformation where what you do has to shift. Transformation. <laughs> Choosing a path and honoring it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this final question may dovetail into some of the responses that you've given, but it is when you reflect on this experience that we've shared in this room, what are your primary takeaways? What are your takeaways? Finding the small spaces in the big group. Hmm. Authenticity. Authenticity. The importance of mentorship. And community. Stepping outside your your box, mm -hmm. knowing yourself, listening to yourself, mm -hmm. and listening to yourself and others. Yes. Mm -hmm. Knowing that being uncomfortable means growing. Time is an interesting teacher if you have patience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? Seeing yourself through all that. Yes. Mirrors and windows as we see open. How feeding and affirming it is to see and talk with a lot of people of color in dance. Mm -hmm. To not just be the two in the court, you know, in a, in a yeah. live room. <laughs> like, <laughs> like to just, even just to say, hey, in the bathroom, I feel fed by seeing, you know, people yes. that I see in different pockets, but like, oh, we all exist at the same time in one place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I want to say to the joy of that. Like, yeah. that yeah. I want to remember that we can gather more than once a week. Well, thank God for Camille doing this, and, and yeah. may we all continue to gather in more times like this. Right. Yeah. Um, the moments of similarity and commonality, even though I know we're all from different places, it's just it's nice to connect and be like, yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Any other takeaways from our time together today? The possibility of existing in my full self mm -hmm. and being seen and witnessed in that. Mm -hmm. And also to be able to witness yes. others. Wow. Trust in the circle that when the container is created, the right stories come. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Love that. Mm -hmm. How easy it can be to see someone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not to make a book. <laughs> <laughs> explain either your blackness or your gender, then these stories start to flow that make it more universal and even universal and individual at the same time because I'm listening to this person talking now. She had been in a performance. She first had to be like, oh, I'm this black woman doing this, but it's like, no, I am a person getting an education and this is the struggle that I had and this is my personal journey or struggling with trying to create a solo or producing your own work or dealing with jobs. Once all of you get past the mask, then it's like, oh, heart to heart <laughs> connections. Yeah. Heart to heart connections. Vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Being vulnerable enough and feeling okay to be kind of vulnerable in the space. Um, and oftentimes, for me personally, when I'm in other spaces with dancing bodies, I don't know if I feel vulnerable to tell something that, that personal. Mm -hmm. Or if I tell the story, it's the non dancers so I don't feel like I'm judged. Not being afraid to take up space mm -hmm. um, and making it very sacred. I think um, as beings, we have a right and a passage to ourselves and the things that come before us. Um, to be that vessel, to be that spiritual conduit, mm -hmm. and also to be fearless in self. Mm -hmm. um, so I think taking up space and being that safe and knowing your power and knowing your mm -hmm. magic that is the heart of the Know your magic. So now that we've taken this time <laughs> in a group, let me just say thank you all for bringing your full, authentic, open, vulnerable, brilliant, talented selves into this space. Um, 
for deciding how we were going to create it and then honoring that. Um, we're now going to transition from the group exercise into a more individualized exercise um, to close. And I'm going to pass to Paloma to talk to you more about what that will look like. Great. So you can still come back to the space where your group is, because I think you've deposited some energy there, probably, that might be useful in the next thing we'll do. Um, but could you grab a pen or a pencil, and if you don't have a writing implement, can you come see Indira? <laughs> yeah, pass it on. Your neighbor might have one, though. Your neighbor might have one. So just be patient and raise your hand when the when the pens come back in. She'll let you know. Yeah. I do. I do. I'll use oh, they're sharpies. Okay. Well, we have more sharpies over here. Or if anyone else in another group has an extra. Sharpie. 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 Thank you. Who else needs pens? Raise your hand. Look, there's some. And that way you can take several sheets of paper if you have sharpies. Yeah, I'm like gonna need more. If you need more paper, we have more. If you need some, we'll pass it around. But I want to give you your prompt so you have a little bit of time to write. Yeah. So now you're not doing group work anymore, but I just brought you back to your group area because I feel like you, you have energy in that space. Um, so now you're going to write yourself a letter to remind yourself of what you want to take with you from this moment that you've had together here. And you mean the whole Whatever part of the moment feels like, oh, I want to take that with me. You know, like it could be, oh, I mean, it's not, what we're going to do is we're going to have you address an envelope to yourself, and we're going to send it back to you in six months. Oh. Yeah. So whatever in six months you want to be reminded about, about what happened here for you. It doesn't mean you have to say, oh, this and this and this. And we can talk about, I know people's lives are mobile. And so we can talk about like how, if, if you have an individual case where you're like, uh, I don't really know about where to send this to me. Like that's real. So come and see us and we'll try to figure something out around that. But I want you to have some time right now because you've really only got like maybe, what time is it now? 
6.38. 10 minutes. <laughs> so write a letter to yourself. What do you want to carry away with you? Yes. Thank you.
Indira has passed out envelopes for everyone, so write your address in there. Um, and like I said, if you have, if that's complicated, then come and see us after. large circle just so we can do a proper closing with one another of this time you've spent.
everybody, let's get on our feet. Let's circle up. 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 Juju on these letters that we wrote to ourselves. Yes. And to know that for today, for this time that we've come together, we are a we. Um, we have, because we've done the work of weing us. Um, and listen, that's how we do. And, uh, and I'm so thankful for um, this group, this trust this time, um, if we could close out just by each of us, and this can be overlapping, just allowing yourself one more layer of synthesis. I know I'm mean synthesizing this. One more layer of synthesis um, that distills us to a word that we really just want to put back into the space for one another. So we're, the letters are about what we want to take away with us, but what do we want to put back for this last sealed moment of time together? All of these words continue to manifest in the moments that we part from this and in each moment that we can find a way to create a container like this for ourselves and our own communities um, of self and of location, geography, practice, ideology. Just keep make weeing us. Just keep weeing us. Thank you. Yep.
<laughs> so I want to once again thank you all for being here. Truly, it is an honor, and we appreciate you being here. Camille is still like in route, um, coming from APAP. APAP, 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 you know, APAP. she's here, and it's there, and it's everywhere, but she really appreciates all of you being here and wanted me to let you all know that next year for her is more about self-care. So that's what we'll be um, looking at for next that's gathering. And, and of course, other things that may come, come up during the year. Of course, we have a full year until the next gathering happens. Uh, just a few logistical things. So you'll get this when you least expect it, mm -hmm. as it should be a form of uh, re-energizing for all the things that you want for 2016. Mm -hmm. There is a vision board outside. So if you have not contributed to it, there's some um, cutout pieces already on the table. We'd love for everyone's voice to be on that board. So if you haven't had an opportunity, please look at that. If something's jumping out at you, let us know. The volunteers can post it up for you. But we just definitely want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to contribute to that. And we'll take pictures and then they'll float around social media, of course. <laughs> um, something else. Oh, afterwards, you will receive a, a post-event survey. Let us know how we're doing, things you like, things you will encourage us to do. Um, we appreciate all the feedback as it's, it's getting bigger and it's growing. And we definitely want to acknowledge that it's about you. Like Camille started this, it wasn't just for her, it was for about the community that she's in. And so we wanna make sure that we're always addressing the community needs and servicing the community. So please be sure to fill that out, it is anonymous, um, and you'll get that. And other than that, I feel like one uh, more thing. Mm -hmm. I saw two hands over here, so maybe y'all wanna go in the aisle. I was just gonna say, uh, uh, yeah, thank Coloma and Sean. as well, but we knew that probably moving would take a little bit, so we can do both options. Oh, okay. I'm open as long as people I'm are okay both with both options. Oh. The more the merrier. The more the merrier. Yeah. We just wanted to try to do it quickly. So if you're able to <laughs> stay for us to maneuver those chairs, then I'd love for that as well. Oh, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do the setup over here. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
there's a tweet on there. There's a thing. Um, there's actually a tweet. Oh. Just don't delete it. No, don't delete the tweet. I did for one, you can take it out after if you're not. No, 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 I blocked it. Okay, so I'm gonna put picture over there. Oh, Alright. Ah, yeah, 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 Stay ready so you don't got to get ready and have a good night. <laughs>